Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, and thanks for joining us. I'm Morgan Science. I'm the webinar manager here at JotForm, and I'm joined today by my colleague Annabelle Ma, Director of Communications. Today, uh, together, Annabelle and I are going to spend some time giving you ideas about how to take your nonprofit forms to the next level to increase engagement and convert more leads. We're keeping things focused today, looking at four very common forms that we know probably all of you out there are using some combination of, uh, and discussing how to maximize them to uh, get the most impact. So I know some of you on the line with us today are new. Maybe you're joining us from the Nonprofit Marketing Summit, where you heard about JotForm for the first time. For those of you who are new, JotForm is a powerful form building tool. It's entirely no code, so you don't need any technical expertise to use it. It's also flexible and really easy to use, and there are a number of workflow tools built into JotForm as well. So all of that combined means that JotForm is really an ideal tool for helping automate any process that you have and helping keep your organization running smoothly. We've been working with the nonprofit sector since we were founded about 16 years ago. Many of us at JotForm do have some experience working with nonprofits or volunteering with some nonprofits. And we've also um, you know, just heard from the community. So we have tailored resources and also templates available for the nonprofit sector as well. You can find those examples, templates, et cetera, at jotform.com slash nonprofits. We do also have a 50% discount. So you can also learn about the discount there and apply for the discount there. <clears throat> Uh, in just a minute here, I'm going to turn things over to Annabelle to walk us through each of these different examples and show you a before and after, but um, I did want to just give you an introduction to what we'll be looking at today. Again, I know some of you were at the Nonprofit Marketing Summit where we talked about the best ways to build out your lists. Lists are a crucial component, clearly, to really everything you're doing as a nonprofit. And in that session, I talked about the best ways to add a sign-up form or a field to pretty much everything that you do. Today, we're diving deeper into those forms themselves. And uh, again, Annabelle is going to be talking about what you on the screen here. So looking at a volunteer registration form and ways to get more volunteers and get got volunteers more engaged, ways to get more donors and keep them engaged over time, how to keep your events running smoothly and manage everything you need in one place, and also how to get feedback and get feedback uh, coming into you smoothly and cleanly as well. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Annabelle. All right. Thanks so much for the intro, Morgan. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So hi again, I'm Annabelle and really excited to be here today just to give a quick intro about myself. So before I worked at JotForm, I worked at a nonprofit in San Francisco for about a year and a half. And I clearly remember that our forms were a pain. We were always trying to improve them to get more volunteers and donations, you name it. So I really hope today's session helps improve your forms so you can deliver high impact to your organization. So in nonprofits and in businesses, you're constantly competing for people's attention every day. And I don't need to tell you that there are endless amounts of information to consume. So we encounter an information overload basically 24 seven. The problem is that our brains act as a natural spam filter. So we're able to focus on the most important things and ignore the rest. So what does this mean for us trying to get people to pay attention to our nonprofits forms? It means to get our message across and to get people to do what we want them to do, whether that's filling out a form to sign up for a volunteer shift or make a donation to your cause, we need to make things clear, straightforward, and memorable. And even when we think things are clear, straightforward, and memorable, we must look again with an even more critical eye to continue to iterate. So moving on to the next slide. Um, we can see that this is a volunteer form that may look totally fine to the common eye, but let's talk about how we can improve it. First things first, we need to add some branding. Branding is essential because it helps make your nonprofit more recognizable and builds trust with volunteers, donors, and staff. This form doesn't have branding and it'd be easy to update it with your logo and change the colors to match your brand, but expert branding is a lot more than that. It's telling a story of who you are and what you do integrated into every form, flyer, social media post, you name it. So 
Uh, so to take this form up a notch with branding, you can add in a video to the top showing your mission. You can add a personalized background with a picture showing impact. You can enable pre-fill, so returning volunteers have a more customized experience with your key information already filled in. Whatever your brand is defined as should be represented in your forms. Moving on to the next bullet points, re uh, remove form fields that aren't necessary. This form is a good length, but we can remove the address field to refine it even further since it's not super necessary. I understand that some orgs may want to keep this if they're still doing direct mailers, but the point is to try and remove what's not necessary to the form. Again, we're competing for people's attention, so we want the forms to be as clear, straightforward, and memorable as possible. Last thing on this slide is addressing the button language. So successful call to actions or CTAs are descriptive. Let's use this application as an example. Um, instead of making the CTA text vague with words like send or submit, you can spice it up a bit by saying submit my application. It's a small change, but makes a big difference. And even Unbounce, the AI powered landing page builder, found that just changing start your free trial to start my free trial increased the CTA clicks by 90%. So moving on to the next slide, uh, we can see the after part here. So we do have um, some updated branding, the excuse me, the video intro, um, some short and uh, some short fields, and then updated submission button language. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, we have our donation forms. So donation forms are important for obvious reasons. So let's break this one down. This form has a nice layout and color scheme, but it's missing a key piece of information, which is the impact of the donation. It's key to talk about the impact in this form because it refers to how the action of the person's donation is positively impacting and bettering your cause. It helps to further tell the story of why your organization matters and how the donor's monetary gift is helping. Many nonprofits have annual reports with great stats and information about their programs, and that's a good place to pull a description for your donation form. As we talked about on the last slide, try to make the description short, straightforward, and memorable. You can always link to a page of your website with more information, but the goal is to write out what the impact is and have a donor understand it at a glance. The second bullet point we have here is Payment Gateway. This form straight up doesn't have one, so the nonprofit wouldn't be able to collect donations automatically. They'd have to reach out again to the donor to coordinate how they'd get the funds, which just seems chaotic. A more streamlined way to do this is to use a payment gateway. So Drop From, for example, has over 30 to choose from with big brands like Stripe, PayPal, and Square. And as a side note, we don't take any cut of the transactions. So payment gateways make the donor experience a breeze and help your nonprofit get donations fast. The last bullet point we have here is the option to opt in or out of marketing materials. In our session at the Nonprofit Marketing Summit last month, we discussed lead generation and list building through forms. Including an opt-in checkbox under the email field gives donors the option to subscribe to your email updates, which is always good to do from a marketing lens. If the person does check this, they will allow you to send them information about your campaigns, events, and which is great to stay top of mind with them. But on the other hand, there is a lot of noise out there like we've been talking about, so you could include an opt out checkbox to give the donor the option. This could be a nice to have as well, since some individuals might only want to donate. So moving on to the next slide, we can see uh, we have the after shot here. So we have that description of impact. Um, we have the payment gateway enabled, opt in to mailing list, and then the clear button language again. So moving on to the next slide we have our event RSVP form. So this one again, pretty simple. So let's take a deeper dive on how to optimize it. Events can be stressful for both the event planner and attendees. This might be common knowledge, but it's good to have a description of the event ready and posted to your blog and social media before you send out any type of registration form. And to further clarify what this event is, whether it's internal or external, it's important to write a few lines about the event at the top of the form. You can include things like location, date and time, name of the event, and a link to the blog post with all of the details. It's also good to include a direct human contact people can reach out to if they have any questions. This can be included in the description as well as the blog with the event details. 
Next, let's jump to that required form fields bullet point. This one is super important for events because you need to make sure you can get as much information from attendees as possible. You'll need their email for confirmation and, and communication, their name to add to the attendee list, plus ones information, dietary restrictions, and much more. And if the event requires a ticket purchase, you'll also need a payment gateway in the form as well. And that's a nice segue into our last bullet point, which is to add an open-ended text field for people to write out any dietary restrictions, accommodations they may need with regards to accessibility, and more. For events, it's nice to have an open-ended text field so that the event planner and attendees can start conversations early if any modifications are needed. So moving on to the next slide here, we can see um, kind of the after shot of our event RSVP form. So we have that payment gateway enabled. Um, we have some more attendee uh, information. So just a couple tweaks that we would make. So moving on to the next slide, we have our last example here, which is the feedback form. So feedback is key because it shows nonprofit supporters that you value their opinions. It also helps you understand what you're doing well, what you can improve on, and provides you with data to make informed decisions for your nonprofit. Looking at our feedback form example, it looks pretty standard again, but as we've learned throughout the past few slides, there's always a way to make it better. So first things first, we recommend making the feedback form anonymous. Not everyone feels comfortable attaching their name to a piece of feedback. So by removing the name field, you can ensure people will be comfortable and their feedback won't be connected back to who they are. The second bullet point we have here is to make it personal, or excuse me, yes, make it personal. <laughs> and this form actually does this really well. So um, a form should feel like a friendly conversation between you and the respondent. So make it personal by using I, you, your, and other friendly language, like an exclamation point when it makes sense. So this helps respondents feel connected to and engaged with the form. Never, never worry about being too friendly with your forms. <laughs> and lastly, we know that some organizations want to get as much in-depth feedback as possible. And if this is you and you want to send out a long comprehensive form, then be sure to add an incentive uh, for them to fill out. If you can, I suggest giving each person to submit the form a $10 gift card for the first 25 people or so, so that they can get a gift for taking the time to provide answers. If the form is shorter, like in the screenshot, then no incentive is needed, just if the form is long and requires a lot of time. So next we can show you this after slide of the feedback form. So you can see some of the, the tweaks that we've made. And that brings us to the end of this section. So we're gonna pass it back to Morgan to go through the last few slides. Awesome, thank you, Annabelle. Uh, well, I think that was really, really good practical advice. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully everybody on the line today has gotten some idea of something you can implement when you get back. Uh, We'd be happy to share specific examples with you afterwards if uh, if you'd like to follow up with us. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I wanted to sort of summarize what Annabelle just talked about, as well as just talk generally about form best practices. So a lot of this is stuff that Annabelle just covered, but I think a lot of it also applies. You know, if there are forms that we didn't talk about today that you do need to work on back, uh, you know, when you're uh, when you're done with today's session. Um, so the first thing is to keep things as short as possible, as Annabelle mentioned a few times. And um, there are a couple of things that go into that, you know, really thinking about what fields you have, what fields you're requiring. Now, sometimes you may need to require a field like name. You really need somebody's name attached to something. But um, you try to keep those required fields to a minimum. Uh, also, if you do have longer forms, give people a sense of how much time they might be committing to it. So, um, so just generally speaking, you know, try to make things as easy as possible for people. There are a number of studies that show that the longer a form is, or the more time it takes to fill out, the less likely somebody is to complete it. That drop off happens pretty quickly after just a few questions or just a minute or two of time spent on the form. So you really need to keep it as short as possible. Again, as Annabelle mentioned, to compete for time with all of our busy schedules. Uh, Annabelle also talked about being friendly and conversational. That's also a great tip across the board. Um, you know, to the extent that it matches up with your brand, you may, um, you know, not have a brand that fits in with having a, a pretty, you know, conversational tone. But if you do, or if you have room to play around there, just 
This is a, a way to connect with people and to remind them that there's somebody else on the other side of the form. I think, especially with nonprofits, it's oftentimes a small organization. There's often a person specifically reading these answers. So why not remind people that, you know, you are there, this is a connection, this is an engagement. So that's um, definitely something to keep in mind as well as your designing language for the form. I evaluate the experience of completing the form before you send it out and also a couple of things that go into that. So always good to review for grammar, for spelling, you know, that sort of thing, for accessibility, make sure that it's a color scheme that's easy to read. Uh, but also look at whether your forms are optimized for mobile experience. So much of what we do is on mobile these days. A job form is automatically responsive. So you do see a clean form across the board, regardless of device that you're using. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's optimized for those. So it does just make sense to look at what, you know, what the experience is on desktop, on a laptop, on a tablet. You do have an option to preview your forms in each of those formats on job form. So as you're going through the form, you'll see a little, um, there's a preview option on the upper right-hand side of any forms where you can see what it'll look like for anybody who's accessing the forms. Share your form across multiple channels, again, to the extent that it makes sense to do so. So if this is a feedback form for a specific event, you probably aren't going to share it broadly, but otherwise really make the form work for you. Uh, you know, if you are looking for new volunteers and looking for new donors and looking for new employees, there's no reason that you shouldn't be sharing that form broadly, no reason that you should be duplicating efforts and completely tailoring an email different from a social media post or something along those lines. You can always just, you know, tailor your text and link to a form, whatever the case may be. Just, you know, think about how you can share your form and, um, you know, how you don't have to spend extra effort to do that. Finally, to go back to the nonprofit marketing session lesson, um, any form can be an opportunity to list build. Maybe it's not quite any form, but most forms can be an opportunity to list build. Annabelle talked about including an opt-in or an opt-out checkbox, asking people to confirm that they want to sign up or confirm that they don't want to sign up for messages from you. If you're attracting new donors or new volunteers, these are people who are already interested in your organization. So there's really no reason that they shouldn't be added to your list. So include that opt-in or opt-out option, ask for emails where it makes sense, and um, you can grow your list in that way. Before we uh, close out today, I did want to talk a little bit more as well about other job form tools. So we have spent this session talking about forms and looking at practical ways to very easily update your forms. And I think any of the examples Annabelle showed, I actually um, worked on some of those before and afters, and it really just takes a matter of minutes to make those changes and make it more branded and make it have higher impact. Um, but there are also other job form tools as well that may be interesting or useful to you and your processes. As I mentioned at the top, job form is really a workflow management entirely. So everything starts with a form, but what do you do with that data once you have it? Uh, tables in job form, tables get created anytime you create a form. Tables uh, will be launched with all of the fields from your form. So anytime somebody responds, you get that data pulled into tables. You can filter, you can sort, you can add additional columns. So maybe you are, um, you know, it's a donation form and a donation table, and you want to add a checkbox confirming that you've sent a personalized thank you message. You can add a column for that. Uh, you can also re create reports seamlessly from tables. So you can download all of your data from tables and then, you know, upload it to Excel or another file, you know, another sort of um, software and play around with the data and create visualizations. But there are reports built into tables as well. So you can create data visualizations for any of the data you're collecting. You can do that in a matter of seconds. So it's really easy to do and it can be shared right away. It comes in kind of a, um, a like a slideshow format. So you can share whatever you need, leave out what you need, et cetera. So basically a lot of ways that you can play around with tables in general and create data visualization from there. Um, there are also approval flows built into JotForm. So for any form, you can add an approval workflow. And that means that if you have something that takes a couple of steps, you can program it so that uh, nobody nobody on your end has to follow up with people or um, you know, there's just, just a lot less oversight. You can set up the workflow one time and then forms will go through the process. 
So for example, if you have an event RSVP and you want to uh, follow up with a media waiver, it's going to be a fancy in-person event. There are going to be a lot of photos. You want to make sure everybody is aware of that and signs off on that. You can set up your approval workflow so that it automatically sends that media waiver, and then you get notified when the um, the person has filled out that form as well. So anything like that, again, where somebody on your end needs to approve something or you need to follow up with a receipt or um, another form, whatever the case may be, you can build that into job form. Uh, you also have a native inbox feature in JotForm. So, um, you know, if you need to respond to people individually or forward messages individually, any form response will appear in your inbox as an email. So that makes it pretty easy to navigate and follow up. You can create professional branded PDFs in JotForm. So again, you'll take a little bit of time upfront to create the PDF that you want, but from there you can generate that on demand and send it out on demand. So uh, if you need to send a receipt to a donor, for example, that is a really useful tool there. And lastly, I wanted to mention JotForm apps. This is one of our newest features. This launched uh, late last year, so not quite a year old. Apps I think can be really useful for nonprofits among other things. Um, Apps is a place where you can collect multiple forms, any other information, um, anything that you want to share with folks. So if you wanted to, you could create an app for your event where you have the event RSVP, you have the media waiver, you have images from last year's event, you have contact information so they can easily reach out to you if, question, if they have questions, you can have a map with the address, et cetera. So it's sort of a single hub for your event. The last thing I wanted to mention here before we go into Q&A is, again, just wanted to mention that nonprofit discount, so 50% discount for nonprofits. And once again, you can see that and learn more about what JotForm can do for nonprofits at jotform.com slash nonprofit. I also wanted to mention our affiliate program options. So if you do a lot of um, blogging or social posts and you want the opportunity to earn some extra money there um, by mentioning JotForm, there is an option for you. Or if any of you on the line or organizations that work to help nonprofits and advise nonprofits, you also have options as well. So you know, if you want to advise people to use JotForm, you can make a little bit extra money there. Um, so if you're interested in hearing more, I would encourage you to reach out to our affiliates team. That's just affiliates at jotform.com. It's a small team. Somebody will get back to you pretty quickly. And on that note, that wraps up everything that um, we had in our presentation. But I know that we got a bunch of questions from um, registration, as well as I see a couple in the uh, Q&A now. So Annabelle is going to navigate us through some of those. And um, while she's finding questions, I know already that a few people have asked for this presentation. This will be available on JotForm's YouTube channel a little bit later today, tomorrow at the latest. So you can just search JotForm YouTube. We will send out a copy in a couple, uh, a week or two. And if you need a copy of this presentation immediately, um, please feel free to reach out to me directly and I'll send it off to you right away. It's just Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N at JotForm. All right. Thank you so much, Morgan, for, for closing out the presentation. And yeah, it looks like we do have a few questions in the Q&A panel. So I, I'll start with those and then we could um, touch on the other ones that came in earlier if we have time. So uh, the first one is from Heather. She asks, will you share examples of forms that are set up correctly and take advantage of the drop form tools? Um, so in this presentation, we don't really have that put together, but if you reach out to us after and um, specifically ask what you're looking for, we can send you webinars or videos that talk about how to use the products that you're looking for in your forms. Um, the second question here is from Melanie. Can you connect with PayPal Giving so that we aren't charged processing fees? So unfortunately, we do not have PayPal Giving at the moment, but uh, it has been sent to our developers um, this year. And so that is in the pipeline to, to get that um, as soon as possible. We do have 30 other payment processors, though. So um, feel free to check those out, too, if you'd like. And then uh, we have a message from Chris. Thank you for all this great information. I have a form that is asking about dinner choices for an event. Is there a way to tally how many participants choose a specific food choice like chicken or beef? So absolutely, we do have um, kind of as Morgan mentioned, drop form tables and report builder, which I think would both be a good way to tally these up. Morgan, feel free to add on to that um, if you have more. Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly show at the tables here. So I sent our team a 
Very important uh, poll yesterday about whether people prefer pumpkin spice or apple cinnamon as their fall flavor. Um, so just to give you a sense of the visualizations that I mentioned, um, this is what tables would look like. This just has one question, but all of your questions from your form would be collected. And you can easily summarize this here. So you can see that our team very heavily weighs on uh, the apple cinnamon end of things, which I was kind of surprised about, but I'm team apple cinnamon. So maybe I shouldn't have been that surprised. Um, but you can easily create this um, you know, single shot view of responses here. And you can see that all of the responses are tallied at the bottom as well. Um, and you can do this for all of your data. So I just did this for one column, but you can also go into add tab here and create a report view, which would basically do that same thing for all of your data across the board. So it would show you that same information. Awesome, thank you, Morgan. And then Claire also sent us a question saying, would love to see the upgraded volunteer form again quickly. So it'd be great if you could go back to that one. Yep, absolutely. I saw that question and I was getting ready for that one too. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Great. So, so you can see, I know Annabelle touched on this in her piece, but you can see, you know, um, we don't have a logo included for size here, but the colors, the name of the organization, the video all go along with branding. Um, we've shortened it and asked some specific questions of volunteers and um, changed the button language a bit. Perfect. Thank you, Morgan. And then we have, uh, we'll take um, one last question here. So Lynn was asking, would it be possible to show us how to, to do the table process or if there's another video? Um, we have a few minutes, Morgan, if we have time to show it now or we can always center. I, we have plenty. We have tons of videos on table. So <laughs> yeah, we, we do have a lot of videos, but I will just briefly show kind of I'll give an overview overall. So let me this is our very important fall poll. So this is what your form will look like in job form. Um, you can add form elements on the left-hand side here. So all of your basic elements are here. Those payment widgets that Annabelle mentioned are all right here. She mentioned some of the big names, but there are also more um, regional payment options as well. So it's just a matter of picking what's best for your organization. Um, there are also widgets. So that video that I added to the volunteer form, for example, is a Loom widget, but all kinds of widgets you can play around with. You can really get fancy with your options here. Um, the colors are on the side. So if you wanted to change colors for your branding, you have all kinds of options here. I know somebody had asked in the registration, I'm not sure if this person is on the line, but about adding a logo. So you might see that right here. So when you are editing your form, you can add your logo just by clicking this add your logo button here. And then you'll either upload an image or if you have it on a URL somewhere, you can pull it from there. Once you have images uploaded, you can just choose that and apply it and then play around with sizing. Um, so that's your very, very quick 30 second form overview. Now to go back to tables again, all of that data is collected into tables. If I wanted to follow up with folks who, um, just had the pumpkin spice as an option, I can add a column. So you have all kinds of options here for basic columns. You can add, if you want to create a formula based on another table or something that's happening in this table, you can do that here. You can also connect with other tables as well. And to create those reports that I mentioned, um, again, this isn't going to look like much since I just have one data point, but I went to that um, new, uh, what is that? Let me start over. Add tab, reports, hit next, choose the form that you want to create a report for. So in this case, I'll do it based on my fall poll, hit next. And um, it's uh, for some reason it didn't, it's not uh, catching my button. From here, you'll see the option to create, oh, there we go, extended report, compact report, or kind of create your own report. Um, so extended report just means everything's going to be on one page. Compact will put two, uh, two fields, two columns on each page. And um, to take a second there and you can see it's got a header, it's in slideshow format already. Um, you know, I'm not sure why it didn't capture my, uh, Huh. Okay. Well, it um, I think things are running a little bit slow right now, probably because I have a lot going on on my laptop, but it would also include all of your data points. So fortunately, not included right now. I'm not sure why, but um, ideally it would show that as well. And then uh, thank you so much, Morgan. So I think just as a follow-up, Lynn was just asking um, how, how to get to the tables. Maybe we could show oh, how to get to tables. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was so uh, set on giving a brief overview. So a couple of options from your form builder, if you want to get to the table specifically for this form, so get to that table that I've been showing you for this form, 
up on the upper left-hand corner here, you have your options to get to everything. So if you wanted to build an approval flow or you wanted to see your responses in that native email feature, all of those options are here. And then you can click to tables here and that will bring you into tables. Uh, also, you can navigate to those same things on your home screen. So here on the home screen, if I wanna see all of my tables, I can do that as well. And this will show me all of the different tables that I have and I can access any tables from there. Perfect, thank you, Morgan. Well, we are about a minute over now. So um, I think we will we will close for today, but it looks like there's a couple last questions in the chat. So if we did not get to your question, feel free to reach out. Morgan, is, is your direct email the best option for any questions? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to respond to questions. If I don't know the answer off the top of my head, I will ask our support team to get in touch quickly. But you can reach me again. It's Morgan at JobForum, M-O-R-G-A-N at JobForum.com. And I'm also happy to share other resources from there and anything else that you might need. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. We really enjoyed um, presenting this uh, deck today and, and answering your questions. And um, yeah, thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. Um, thanks, everybody. We'll see you at the next webinar, hopefully. See ya. Bye. Bye.